There's no question we need partners. You're watching City Vote 2014, the, the debate, we listening to Karen Stitz. downtown relief line fully funded, we will have shovels in the ground digging for the next 20 years. How that is progress. Pardon me? How do you deal with the loss of the dividend from Hydro? Because that, yeah. that's going to be 20 million or so a year. Well, there's People an there's an assumption that there'll be a loss of a dividend. But if the if the private investment actually grows the wealth of the corporation, then there's no reason that the dividend should decline. You're live on City right now. Uh, what did you think about John Tory not quite answering the question that you put to him about his plan? Well, you know, again, uh, you know, John Tory has been chair of Civic Action for as long as I've been chair of the TTC, and he has very strong views, and he advocated very strongly that we need an adult conversation about how we're going to fund transit. So I know that. He has a position on it and I was only asking him to be clear and I think that as we go into the election the voters want that kind of clarity so they know where to cast their vote. Are you frustrated okay. with Rob Ford's counter, he's a bit of a counter punching debate style. Does that frustrate you at all? Well, that's not new. And so, you know, Rob has, uh, you know, Rob is saying that um, actions speak louder than words and he's going to run on his record. And his record is very well known. And I think the people of Toronto will make their choice in September. In Thank October. you. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. All right, we've been listening to Karen Stintz there. John, John Stahl, let's um, talk about your impression. I mean, we saw from her polling she really didn't make an impression. No, I, I think Karen Stintz was fine. She was acceptable. Uh, she was pretty much what we know her to be at City Hall. I think a little nervous off the top. Uh, had, got a little worked up there throughout the, uh, the debate itself. But, you know, nothing in particular that's memorable or difference-making, I think, to her campaign. Yeah, so just sort of tonight. okay? Just sort of okay. And yeah. frankly, I don't expect them to all to be in the race right to the end so right here we are. right Charlie she played the mom card right the, the kitchen table budget sort of thing yeah and, I, and you know I, I'm not sure that that's a side of Karen Stintz that the voters are all that familiar with I think you know I mean she's been when she's been in the news it's been having to do with transit or it's been having to do with you know the debates over stripping Rob Ford of his powers so you know probably probably not a bad idea for her. Mm -hmm. what, what I think is uh, missing from this debate itself is no memorable line we won't talk about a knockout no punch, knockout punch. Been, not, well the closest I think was Rob Ford's backhand uh, shot at John Tory when he said you fell flat on your face when you were mm -hmm. at the province I mean that was that was a backhand and as much as they tried to say Rob Ford is um, uh, an embarrassment and right. not a role yeah, model. But I think John Tory, yeah. but I think John Tory's onto it when he says, you know, you, you're running out of gas. You're not able to get anything passed at City Hall. You've right. lost your command. To use lines like "you couldn't pass gas," <laughs> you know, is something at least you've got a headline yeah. that's going to take the attention back from Steven the language. He's talking downstairs. And the scandals are part of the performance. Certainly. The people will be voting on that at the end of October. What was your so, goal here tonight? And do you think you're kind of uh, my goal was to to uh, continue to raise our profile, to raise the issues. Uh, we did so, uh, and so the the mission was accomplished. And I look forward to raising them uh, further at the other debates. How do you separate it, yourself from everyone else? Well, I think actually what what you see. Whoops, sorry. Stop using my hands. Uh, I separate myself by taking a look at at the. You see other people here, but in fact, uh, you've got, I'm the only one on the LRT that supports the DRL. I'm the only one that's not afraid to use the T word, which is taxes. I'm the only one to say that we need uh, fully funded transit, uh, the only one to have any nuance, and certainly the one that has the most content-rich uh, platform so far. What we've... What we've done is that we've we've raised issues on everything from job creation uh, through to the uh, through to the culture side all the way to taxes. Right. Nobody else is, pardon me, but nobody else is talking about uh, the large budgets of taxes and emergency services. Are you so, worried so, about taxes? Though saying that word, aren't people uh, shy of it right now? Had enough of it? Well, you know, you say, have you had enough about taxes? And then you go in the Bloor station and you say, hey, this is this is what you think if tran transit's free. Transit's not free. You got to pay for it. And uh, we we can say as much as you want about efficiencies, well, in fact, you have to figure out how to do things differently if you're going to actually provide the revenues and, and build the city that you want. So higher and, taxes? Well, taxes is just part of it. Taxes? taxes is just part of it. I said that what I would be doing is that I would consider taxes with, re with respect to property taxes with the rate of inflation. But at the same time, what you need to do is you need to tackle the big budgets that are growing unsustainably. The police budget, the emergency services budget, they need to be uh, ad addressed. We need to figure out with respect to the uh, to transit, which is key, 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 uh, is to uh, figure out a new way of doing it. And that's why I'm suggesting hiring a construction expert in, in, in the mayor's office. But do you support any of the transit revenue tools? I support, I support looking at them all.
Charlie Gillis from McLean's, John Stahl from 680 News, uh, Charlie David Soknaki. Did he register, much like uh, Karen Stintz, the numbers would say no. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll say from the outset that I think that David Soknaki is probably being the most brutally honest of all the uh, candidates, and I, I fear that he's not going to be rewarded for that. I mean, mm -hmm. he's the one having the adult conversation, saying that all revenue tools have to be on the table for transit, that you have to look at the police and the TTC budgets. But, you know, I mean, in one phrase Rob Ford branded him and, and oh we have that hang on can we roll the uh, the next clip from uh, Miller budget well, I, was, I was told you that 14 years ago that. when you were the budget chief it's for David basic. Miller that I didn't understand finances but yet I'm the one leading the charge saving a billion dollars we have it approved you you're gonna rip up a deal who is David Sognacki? A lot of people are asking that, and Mayor Ford was quick to connect him to David Miller. Yeah, a former budget chief, and, and, you know, I mean, that is, as I say, in one phrase, he's essentially associated Sognacki with uh, a politician that, you know, Sognacki probably had a lot of differences with, ideologically mm -hmm. speaking. But, uh, you know, uh, this is going to really appeal to Ford's base, is that, you know, that that uh, this is uh, not and the, the guy and you the want. The big question I have is whether or not John Tory was able to successfully brand Olivia Chow as the NDP candidate that he continues to you know, do and mm. preface every time he talks about her. Because mm. um, Tory said, I'm not left, I'm not right, I'm, I'm going right forward. Sure. Yeah. So just in terms of public perception, um, I'm not sure everybody sees Olivia Chow as a left winger, mm -hmm. but obviously Rob Ford and John Tory are trying to position her that way as an NDP, and I'm I'm curious to see how, how our voters and people in general feel about that. Whether yeah. they we were kind of looking for a knockout punch. We were talking about I, maybe Jimmy Kimmel delivers it here. Look at this tweet. <laughs> I'm looking from, for a memorable line from Jimmy Kimmel. He, Kimmel just tweeted. So he's been watching. People have been watching around the world. Oh my goodness. At T.O. Mayor Ford is JFK compared to some of these candidates. <laughs> wow, and, what do you think? And, and I think this goes to our earlier point about, you know, uh, the, the Rob Ford's opponents fundamentally misunderstanding how the rest of the world receives and perceives this story. And, you know, I, I mean, people were tuning in tonight to see Rob Ford, in a sense, in some way, shape or form, respond or not to, show up or not or collapse yeah. right or speak in patois whatever mm. but the you know the broader point being that there was an opportunity here and i'm afraid it was an opportunity missed it's fair to say he was on his game yeah right he was on his game he had his facts there whether they're actually truthful or not that billion dollar figure yeah. is, is up for debate yeah. i suppose but again i go back to this communication it's it's he connects with people no notes Right off the top, he's looking right at the camera. He knows exactly what he's going to say. Not too slick, but, you know, slick enough. Right. Um, it, it is one of those magic components that I think every politician in the world would love to have. And expectations are low. That's you yes, know, always sure. the important. We're going to go live to Pam Seidel now, who is standing by with the fringe candidates. Pam? Who is standing by with the fringe Well, thank you very much, Tom. As you know, there are close to 50 people who have registered to run for mayor. We invited all of them here tonight to the Jazz Bistro, and we've been speaking to many of them about their views and their opinions on the issue. And right now, I want to introduce you to a few of them. Some of them you may remember from their previous lives, others you have never heard of. Norm Gardner, Hi, he is a former city councillor, chair of the Police Services Board. Richard Underhill, a saxophonist extraordinaire. There, and Morgan Baskin, who is an 18-year-old high school student. How do you run for mayor and go to high school at the same time, first of all? You work hard. And I think that bottom line, I clock a lot of hours working really hard and in all those places that youth are. What's your main message quickly, Morgan? My main message is youth matter. And it's been proven. My Twitter's been blown up. Oh, really? That's great. And Richard? Hi. We've got a few seconds here. Okay, we need to build a sustainable city that gets people around with LRTs and a downtown relief line and doesn't have an uh, airport the size of Ottawa International on our beautiful waterfront. Thank you very much, Richard. Norm Gardner? Well, you have to have a, vi a vision for the future. You can't uh, just sit there and, 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 and go along with repeating the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we well. have... We have huge uh, budgets, we have huge responsibilities, it is a big city and the quality of a life for people is very important and um, uh, you know, that, that's what I want to address. Well, thank you very much. I would like to thank all of the candidates who came here tonight. I'm sorry that we haven't been able to speak to all of them, but we will be hearing from them over the course of the next seven months. This is a very long campaign, we've got a long way to go till next October. Tom, for now, it's back to you. Okay, Pam, thanks very much. Charlie Gillis from McLean's, John Stahl from 680 News. The, the post game continues right after this. Stay with us.
Welcome back to City Vote 2014, the debate. We're going to throw it back to Francis D'Souza to see how the voting has been going. Francis? Yeah, this is really interesting, Tom, and it confirms some of the stuff you've been talking about with your panel. You've been interacting with us, voting for which candidate you think won the debate. Let's show you and get to those final results here, because the question we asked is, who has your vote for mayor? You can read the results for yourself here. So Olivia Chow ends up with 43%. Rob Ford, who uh, really dominated the polls throughout the uh, night, uh, ended up here in second spot with 34%. John Tory, middle of the road, didn't really perform well, 19%. And this is the ultimate surprise here. Karen Stintz essentially did not even register with the viewers today. Neither did David Soknaki. So when you look at the results here, it looks like uh, overall Olivia Chow came out on top with uh, uh, Rob Ford coming out second. Tom. Okay, Francis, thanks very much. Uh, Charlie, last thoughts. What do you think? Well, I, I just would reiterate the point that these candidates have got to, you know, count on Rob Ford being in this thing for the long haul. I mean, yes, it's going to be a very, very long campaign. Lots can happen. But, you know, the police and the courts aren't going to do their job for them here. They can't think that way. They have to be ready for him. They have to, you know, position themselves in a way to differentiate themselves from him. Because he's and, up and not for just the try, fight, not too. just try to write his legacy. As, right. And, as, and he's, as up, he's up to it. Yeah, Tory and Stintz are in this position of essentially trying to scoop up his voters. But yeah. if he's in this thing, they have to differentiate themselves from Rob Ford. John? I'm not sure that, that Stinson Saknaki will be in this race, certainly until the end, and some of their support will go to John Tory uh, before this is over. But in, in just in terms of tonight, I think you know Ford performed above expectation. Um, you were surprised. I was surprised, yeah. frankly. Uh, maybe it was because Fewer of them went after him on the personal scandal stuff more directly, but he was he, he over uh, achieved in, in terms of uh, my observation. Olivia Chow, it's as scrappy as I've seen her in six mm -hmm. to seven years. Mm -hmm. She got a little too refined in Ottawa, I think, for people who remember here in, uh, right. okay. in the city council. But we got to take in a break, John. Uh, stay with us here. We'll be back right after this. All right, welcome back to City Vote 2014. John Stahl, 680 News. Charlie Gillis of McLean's Magazine as we can continue to break down this debate. We're going to go to the three stars, John. Okay. My first star is Rob Horn. Rob Ford. And that is because um, he overachieved, in my view. He had a lot of time on ice, stopped a lot of shots, and even took a few on goal himself and <laughs> scored one against uh, John Tory with a backhand remark. again, you've got mark. that surprised look on your uh, face. I, you I, I, Listen, I'm not saying he's going to win the election. Yeah. I'm just saying tonight's debate goes to Rob Ford for the way he handled it, I think, in terms of body language and defending and deflecting against pretty much a weak offense on the other side. Star number two, Olivia Chow. Scrappy, as scrappy as I've seen her in five or six years. When she was in Ottawa, a little quiet, a little refined, mm -hmm. not the way people remind, remember her here at City well, Council. she needed to be tonight. She did. I think right. she needed to distinguish herself uh, as that municipal politician again who can get down into the trenches and fight at street level right. Right. and also distinguish herself from John Tory, who is star number three. Right. Underperformed a bit in my view. Not terribly, right. but just missed a few opportunities. Okay. A little too slick, a little too smooth. We're just running out against the clock. So, Charlie, you're yeah, three uh, stars. Uh, I, I'm going to replicate his uh, order for Chow Tory. Chow, to me, set herself up as a, as a competent alternative. Tory, he, he looked like the steady hand. And Ford, look, expectations were low. He exceeded them into pull 40% on leadership of all issues. Wow. Mm. <laughs> All right, Charlie Gillis McLean's John Stahl from 680 News. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's a long Thank campaign, isn't it? It is. It's um, just starting tonight. We will gather again, I'm sure. Do you think we see these five going forward? I don't. I think um, the Stints will not be in the race. I don't think Saknaki will be in the race. I don't think uh, any of the fringe will be in the race. It costs a lot of money to stay between now and mm. September and yeah. have any effect. And uh, I don't think these people have it. There's a bell. We're out of time. All right. Thanks once again for watching. And a reminder that you can see the debate again on our website, citynews.ca. Also on Rogers On Demand tomorrow morning.